Good evening. How is everyone tonight? Welcome to the Thursday Financial Literacy Freedom Session. Hey, paper girl. How are you? It is Thursday, it's Friday Eve, and I hope everyone's day is going well. This is day four of six in the uh, Financial Freedom Series for Financial Literacy Month. And I hope that everyone's been getting some good value out of this series that uh, I've been doing so far. Today, I'm gonna talk about another step for financial freedom. So I'll give it another minute or so and we'll get started, let some folks join. Cause this one is a big one, debt. Debt, something that we never really prepared ourselves for, never knew. You know, all we knew is we couldn't wait to get that nice car, that nice house. Didn't necessarily know what all came with that in terms of debt. So I'm going to talk about some steps for how we can better take control of our debt, some quick ways to eliminate our debt, get ourselves back on track. And I'm just checking out over here to see who's joining us. All right, I am gonna go ahead and get started because I have a lot of information to cover and I wanna respect the time of those who joined and get right into it. So tonight's topic again is about debt elimination, um, getting the creditors out of our pockets because one of the biggest things um, that we need on the road to financial freedom is we need to not have to pay money unnecessarily in terms of things like interest, right? So when we, when I talk about debt, I'm talking about consumer debt, things that you have to pay down and things that generally come with uh, interest because that's the price that we have to pay for getting someone to loan us money to purchase the things that we need. So of course, you know, with interest, you can end up, depending on where you are with your credit, you can end up paying one, two, three times as much as what it costs for the actual thing that you purchase because of interest. So definitely one of the things that's important is to get the creditors out of your pockets so that you can use that money for other things like growing your money. So we want to reverse the interest. We don't want to have to pay the interest. We want to be able to earn the interest. Earning the interest is tomorrow's topic, but today we're going to talk about paying off that debt to get those creditors out your pocket. And basically the concept is the sooner you can pay off your debt, the more you can pay on your debt, the easier it'll become in terms of um, the less interest that you have to pay. So that's a really important topic. I'm gonna switch over here, turn on my laptop so I can see better. Hey Dexter, how are you? North Carolina in the house. And yes, when you join, let me know where you're checking in from. I know we've got people from different spots. So let me know where you're checking in from and um, give me a shout out. All right, so let's talk about some stats. I always like to include stats in a discussion because it's, it's important to understand the state. And in order, to fix a problem, you first have to know it's a problem. And we definitely, even for us being the richest country in the world and the United States, we have some challenges when it comes to finances. Um, we control 25% of the world's wealth, yet we're the 11th largest country and we are struggling financially. So I wanna talk about some st statistics around the current state of debt in the United States. So here's an interesting one. The average household in the US has credit card debt at an estimated $6,921 in um, balances carried from one month to the next. 
or revolving balances. So almost $7,000 per household, that's quite a bit of credit card debt. Um, here's another one, US households with any kind of debt held an average of $135,768 in outstanding debt, which can include mortgages um, and credit card balance. So average household has over $100,000 worth of debt, which is, you know, which is a nice amount. Um, here's another interesting stat. In the third quarter of 2018, 2.6 million student loan recipients had, had, who had federal loans, actually their loans were in forbearance, which means that they requested to pause the payments, yet the interest was still accruing on those student loans. So that's pretty staggering. 2.6 million people last year had to ask the government to pause and because they couldn't afford to make the payments, but yet the interest is still accruing. So essentially it's going to mean you end up costing more because the interest is still accruing, yet you haven't made those payments. Um, and I, I look at debt, when you think about debt in the state of where we are and how so many people get debt, it's so easy to get debt, but it's hard to get out of it. I mean, people start getting um, requests for debt, you know, in high school. You know, certainly college, um, the, many credit card companies target college students or attract them with these private loans and things for school. Um, so coming out of college, you know, we're faced with a mountain of debt and it's an uphill battle that we have to climb from the time we're leaving school to the time we die essentially because we're constantly um, slaving to pay off this debt. And that's why I consider debt as a modern form of slavery because it keeps us and bondage and it keeps us having to work to pay that debt, right? So that, that's definitely something that we wanna look at and talk about what can we do to change the story because you can change the story as it relates to debt. So one of the things that I like to think about and there's several approaches to how you can eliminate debt. And I'll talk about the two main approaches that people use to eliminate debt. And it's not just paying your minimum payment. You pay your minimum payment on debt, you know, you're gonna pay the full life of that loan, including all of the interest. And the goal is to reduce the amount of interest that you have to pay by essentially paying more on the principal of that payment. So give you an example, you have a home mortgage and that mortgage is um, $1,000 a month. And of that thousand, seven hundred is the principal, three hundred is the interest. You know, an, an example of paying it off quicker is you pay instead of seven hundred on the interest, you pay a thousand dollars. I mean, seven hundred on the principal, you pay a thousand on the principal. Still pay your three hundred on interest, but now you're paying more on the principal. The quicker, the more you pay on the principal, the less interest you have to pay, and of course, the faster you actually pay that home off. So that is the concept of what I call debt acceleration, to accelerate the payoff of your debt by paying more. And I'm gonna talk about some ways that you can do that. But the two most form, popular forms of doing that is two things, one called a debt snowball and one called a debt avalanche. A debt snowball starts with paying the smallest uh, debt off first. So you arrange all your debt from smallest to largest, and you start by paying off the smallest debt first. And then you move on to the next one and on to the next one. I'm going to illustrate what that looks like. That mechanism allows you to be able to see some victory sooner. Now, some people may say, why, why not pay? And so I'll, let me tell you about the second method. The second method is called the avalanche method, where you start with the uh, the bill, the debt that has the highest interest payment, which generally in most cases is probably like credit cards, any sort of revolving credit generally has a higher interest payment. So the avalanche method says you pay off the highest interest first, and then you go after the next ones and you work your way down all the way down to the one that has the lowest interest. And there's some pros with that because of course, as you're continuing to pay debt, the interest is continuing to accrue. So if you can go after the big ones first and get them out of the way, then you re you end up paying less because you're, you're tackling those big monsters 
sooner than later. However, the flip side, the downside of that is that if it's a big thing like a student loan where it's $30,000 worth of debt, it could take you quite a while to pay that. So you won't necessarily see the, the, um, the, the, the victory and the um, benefit of getting it checked off your list. Cause there's something about being able to check something off that list for the human psychology that makes us feel like we're doing something as opposed to paying, paying, paying something for years. And you don't necessarily see the, uh, the immediate gratification of that victory of having completely paid it off. So I'm going to talk about the debt snowball method where you take the smallest thing first, the smallest debt first, and then you pay it off and then you go after the next one and the next one and the next one. That's the approach that I'm going to use. And if you guys have any questions as I'm going along, feel free to type them in the comments. I see some comments over here. I'm just going to put. All right. So first step. In this whole plan, I'm going to talk about the, the steps that you need to do to get the um, use the debt snowball method. So the first step right here on the whiteboard, step one over here, is to free up cash flow. Because remember, we want to pay more than the principal. So you may be saying, well, Nicole, where am I going to get this extra money from? Where am I going to get extra money to pay more on the principal so I can pay it off quicker? Well, some of the stuff we've already talked about in the previous days, days one through three of ways that you can free up cash flow. So I'm going to go over some ways that you can free up cash flow or create cash flow so that you can take that money that you free up or create and put it on your debt to pay it off quicker. So let's talk about minimizing expenses. One of the things that you can do to free up cash flow is look at your expenses. Look at everything. Look at your cable bill. Look at your cell phone bill. You know, look at your um, any sort of revolving credit and negotiate to get those um, get lower deals. I actually just last week contacted um, uh, the cable company and negotiated with them to get my cable bill down by an extra $30 a month. And you know, I was like, Hey, I need to know what deals there are because what I normally do is I get a deal. And then normally, you know, when they give you these deals, it may last for like a year or something like that. So when that time comes, when that year is up, I'm on the phone again. All right, what can we do? I want to get something else. What are you offering? What's current? So I do that regularly to minimize part of minimizing my expenses to keep my bills down low. So those are some of the things you can do, you know, take lunch, you know, instead of going out to eat every day, maybe you only go out to eat on Fridays for lunch and you take your lunch the rest of the week. You know, if you figure, you know, $5, $10 a day for lunch, that's $40 a week times four is six, $160 a week. So there's some things you can do to free up cash flow by looking at how you can minimize your expenses. Some people get rid of cable altogether and say, you know what? I got internet. I can do some streaming on TV. I can use my Netflix and I don't need um, cable. So some people get rid of cable altogether. That's freeing up cash flow. So minimizing expenses is all about freeing up cash flow, money that maybe you were already paying on something else, changing that so that you can now free up that cash flow to use it on something else. As far as debt, business income. Again, you know, I say everybody needs a business. There are many side hustles that you can get if you don't have a business. And the beauty of having a business is it's up to you how much money you want to make. You're not capped at 40 hours a week. You're not capped at, you know, eight hours a day or overtime here and there. You have an opportunity to control how much money you make according to the efforts that you put in. And once again, network marketing is a great way to do that. We talked about on day two, leveraged and residual income. How cool would it be to put yourself in a position where you have a business where other people are making money for you, or you have residual income that's coming in on a regular basis that you can now take and put on eliminating your debt. So that's another income source. You know, it's totally up to your efforts, not necessarily up to someone else's opinion on how many hours they want to give you 
to work or getting a raise um, if you're qualifying for a raise. So that's definitely another way. Then we talk about tax savings. So we talked yesterday about getting Uncle Sam out your pocket. So imagine if you could redo your W-4 um, because you have a business and be able to free up a couple hundred dollars a month, two, three, four hundred dollars a month by redoing your W-4. And now you can take that money again to your debt elimination or if you're someone who is a business owner you save money through your tax minimization so if you're able to write off taxes write your tax or write off your tax deductions now that's less money you have to pay to uncle sam again freeing up cash flow the more tax deductions you can write off the less money you have to pay the more money you have that you can add to your debt the next one uh, refinancing after credit repair. Day one, we talked about credit. Get your credit fixed. We talked about steps to be able to fix your credit. So you see how all these things all come together. They all have a relationship about getting financial freedom. So if you fix your credit, you improve your credit from a 600 to a 700, 750, you can very easily now renegotiate your loans and reduce refinance and renegotiate your loans on your mortgage on your car note whatever other um, loans you may have and get the interest get a lower interest rate which is going to again free up cash flow because your payments will not be reduced so instead of paying let's say a thousand dollars a month on your mortgage you could be in a position where you're only paying eight hundred dollars a month now you've got two hundred dollars freed up that was previously going to your mortgage company that you can now use to pay down your debt to get yourself out of debt quicker makes sense if this is making sense to you guys and you're getting some value out of this give me some hearts give me some thumbs let me know what you're thinking if you think if you're getting some value out of this then the last one is investing investing so putting your making your money grow and getting a rate of return on your investment is another great way to get some additional cash flow whether that's through real estate whether that's through um, you know in the in the stock market you know and I'm gonna talk about that's tomorrow's topic investment but you know I'm gonna enlighten people there's ways you can start investing and earning money without having thousands of dollars you can start to make your money grow so I'm gonna I'm gonna talk about investing tomorrow and show you how easy it is to get in the game how easy it is to grow your money and now you can put yourself in a position where you have some extra cash flow coming in pay once and let the money grow that money you could potentially use again to start to pay down some of your debt potentially so investing is another opportunity that you have where you can put it on your debt so these are all what i call debt accelerators these are all things where you can have some extra cash flow to add to whatever payments you're already making so that you can accelerate the debt elimination because again the quicker you pay off the principal the less interest you have to pay you start to save money so you can see how debt elimination can save you money you pay it off quicker you save money by not paying that interest that you would have had to pay if you were only making the minimum payments so that's the strategy for debt elimination all right so let's talk about step two i'm going to switch over here talk about step two so here we are for step two so this is an example of what it looks like when you do debt elimination now i did this by hand but there's software that you can use to lay out the debt elimination strategy so step two you want to list out all your debt you want to take all of the debt that you owe now i'm not talking about expenses like your cable bill your water bill gas lights groceries because those things will always be there right you want to minimize those but i'm talking about the debt that you have to pay consumer debt that you have to pay down and you owe someone for it and so you want to list out all of your debt you know your car note your mortgage your student loans um, any other kind of loans you may have, um, anything that you financed. If you have stuff on your credit report, 
And remember, we talked about going through the credit report after you've gone through that process and it's still legitimate debt that you have to pay. You need to add that on here because the goal is ultimately to get you to the point where you've got zero debt. And I never had imagined that I could become debt free. And I, I, I thought about it, but I never knew a strategy in doing it. And now I have a roadmap laid out before me to show me how I can become debt free and actually when I will become debt free. So there's software that I'll be talking about that shows you how you can type, put it in your debt and it lays out a strategy for you. So in this example, this person, so this column is your debt, how much you owe, what is the balance on that debt? What is the minimum payment you're making? What the new payment is and how many months to pay it off and then how much cash you'll have once you pay that debt off. Now, let's assume by doing all of these things that I talked about in step one, you freed up $500 a month. And that's not hard to do if you think about um, minimizing your expenses, earning some income from the business, um, refinancing your home or your car. And I know people who have done that once they've improved their credit score, they've gone back and freed up a couple hundred dollars a month doing that. So there's many ways that you can free up. So let's say you were able in doing all of these things to free up $500 a month that was previously either going to taxes or, you know, on, on um, your payments because you're, you lowered your interest. So let's say you got $500 a month that's free. That $500 is now going to get added into this debt elimination plan. So in this example, you got a credit card. And again, remember in the debt snowball method, we start with the smallest and then you work your way up to the largest because we want to see some quick wins in terms of paying off some of this debt. So you can see here, 6,000 is the balance. That's the smallest all the way up to 30,000 for the student loan. So we got a 6,000 credit card balance, a 20,000 car note balance, a $30,000 student, student loan balance. So we're going to go after the credit card one first. So we got credit card, $6,000 balance. The minimum payment that you're paying is $25. You're going to add $500. The 500 from step one, you're going to add it to that $25 payment. So now instead of paying 25, you're going to pay $525 a month on that credit card. And guess what? That credit card will be paid off in just over a year, 13 months. Credit card paid off. Yay! celebrate go you know go do something nice for yourself don't spend a bunch of money but do something nice for yourself now guess what you got five hundred dollars five hundred and twenty five dollars freed up right so now you take that 525 because you don't stop there you take that 525 that was going to that credit card and you drop it down on your car note so now you were paying 400 originally. Now you're going to pay 925. Take that 525 that was previously going on that credit card, drop it on that auto loan. Now you're paying $925 a month. And guess what? Your car note is paid off in just under three years, 31 months, instead of four or five years that it would have taken had you just been making the regular payments. So now, Car paid off, yay! You're dancing, you're geek, just you're fired up now because you see some victory, right? You you chipped it off in just a year. You got one debt paid off, a little over a year. Now in two years, you got another debt paid off. Now you you're rocking and rolling. Now guess what? You got nine hundred and twenty-five dollars, nine hundred and twenty-five dollars left. So now what do you do? Well, you don't stop there. Now you, you, you break it down to the next, the biggest, the next loan, which is your student loan, $30,000, right? You were paying 300. Now you're going to pay 1225. Take that 925, drop it on this payment. Now you pay 1225. Guess what? Now your car is paid off. Your student loan is paid off in 53 months, 53 months, which is less than uh, five years, a little over four years. Four years and five months to be exact. And so you're, you pay that off. And now guess what? Number one, you're debt free. Yay! Number two, you got $1,225 freed up. Now think about that. You're, you're debt free and you have $1,225 saved up that you did not have before. And 
the thousands of dollars that you have saved yourself by way of debt elimination. So you've eliminated $56,000 of debt in four years and five months, and you you would be debt free in 2023. So four years and five months. So that would be today. This is April. So September, 2023, you will be doing the happy dance because you, you completely debt free, assuming you're not going out and getting any more debt. So that is the strategy that you use for debt elimination. And guys, I know people, myself included, who are following this strategy and paying off mortgages, 30 year mortgages in seven years, eight years, six years by following the strategy, this debt snowball elimination method. So it absolutely does work. It certainly does work. It requires some diligence, it requires some dedication and some discipline, but it's definitely possible to be able to put yourself in a position where you're debt free. Because guess what? Tomorrow's topic is about investing. Imagine if you had $1,225 after paying off your debt that you can drop into an investment on a monthly basis. Imagine a power that you're creating and this is how you put yourself in a position to get financial freedom. This is the key guys. And it's definitely doable to be able to take this strategy, take money that you already had or money that you can go and get through uh, a side hustle or a business if you already have one and use that to get yourself out of debt. So the strategy definitely works. Now people may say, well, man, Nicole, this is, you know, you may be looking at your debt and you're like, oh my God, I got, you know, this hundred and some thousand dollar mortgage. I got all this debt that may look overwhelming in the beginning when you look at it. But in order to do this or any of the other things that I've been talking about, guys, you have to um, have a mindset shift. Um, you have to think about money a little bit differently. So I want to talk about some of the things that you need to do to shift your mind to be able to truly get yourself in a position to to get financial freedom. And it's really changing your relationship with money and taking control of your money. And part of the, the challenge that we face with our money is we don't, we let our money control us and we don't control our money. So we've got to put ourselves in a position where we control our money and that we have a plan and we are not lackadaisical with the, the flow of our money. Because when you look around, everybody's trying to take your money, <laughs> right? You know, you think about the advertising, you think about everywhere you look, Facebook now, right? You talk about something and all of a sudden an ad pops up on Facebook for the same thing that you were just talking about. So everybody is looking to take your money. It's up to you to take control of it and know exactly what you need to do with it. And it's not as difficult as most people may think. It does require discipline, but it's definitely doable. I see people doing it all the time. I'm personally on the same journey and I see the benefits and it's working and it's freeing up cash flow. My debt elimination is not that far away where I'll be completely debt free. And I'm super excited about that. So let's talk about some mindset things, things that you have to do um, and a mindset. And guys, if you're getting some value out of this, let me get some feedback. Give me some hearts. Give me some thumbs. Um, definitely share this information. If you know people need to be in a position where they can eliminate debt and get themselves out of debt and maybe don't necessarily know how, um, definitely share this information with them. So let's talk about mindset. One of the things that I, the first thing I would say as far as debt goes is how you think about the debt. Don't view the debt as a burden, view it as a challenge, view it as a goal, flip the script on how you think about it and look at it from a positive mindset. I have a goal to become debt free. I have a goal to, you know, pay off X amount of thousands of dollars in debt. So if you look at it, not as a burden and be overwhelmed and look at it as a goal that you have to chip away with it definitely will make it much easier to accomplish. And if you start to use this approach where you can get some small victories along the way, it definitely helps in this journey. The other thing that I would say is, you know, don't beat yourself up. You know, some of us, we, we you know, maybe had some frivolous spending ways and we found ourselves, 
you know, pretty overwhelmed with debt or, you know, we just wanted to better our lives and go back to school. And now, you know, we look up, we got fifty, sixty thousand dollars $60,000 of debt. It's okay. The key is knowing, accepting that it is what it is. And two, knowing that you have a plan in place to deal with it. Because a lot of the stuff that I'm sharing is stuff that we're not taught. And it's certainly not things that's taught in school. You know, you think about it. Why didn't they teach? Or why don't they teach money management as a core curriculum in school and talk about some of these things when you're young and when you're in middle school and high school even. Um, you know, we used to have home economics, that's pretty much gone. And even in then, sometimes we didn't talk about money. I know I personally never had anyone talk to me about money all through my years. And then even in college, it was all about corporate finance, not personal finance. So, you know, don't beat yourself up, just take some steps, and put a plan in place so that you can definitely get yourself on the road to being debt free. The other thing that I would say is um, think about the habits that you may need to change because you know any kind of change, whether it's your health, whether it's your finances, whatever the case may be, any kind of change requires a change in habits. And so if you know you've got some habits in terms of your spending that has gotten you in trouble in the past or has gotten you over your head, then you've got to think about what are some of the things I need to do? Because this won't matter if you're constantly going out and creating new debt for yourself. So think about the habits that you need to change and put a plan in, in place to work on changing those habits. The other thing I would say is surround yourself by like-minded people. I am a firm believer in the saying, iron sharpens iron, you know, and you are the sum of the five people you hang around with. It's very true. You know, surround yourself by people who also want to improve their situation, their finances, who get this. You know, if you're hanging around broke-minded people, they'll try to discourage you or tell you things, ah, oh, just don't worry about it, just live, you know? If you truly wanna improve your lot in life in terms of your finances, and, and this is the same way with health, surround yourself with people who are like-minded and you know want the same things that you want and serve as a source of encouragement. Get yourself an accountability partner. I am big on that. I have accountability partners in every facet of the areas where I'm trying to improve in my life. You know, I have a health accountability partner. I have a finance accountability partner. I have a business accountability partner. People that understand and get it. And we hold each other accountable for what our goals are. And it gives me motivation to keep pushing. So there are things that you can do to help you in this journey. Um, and the other thing is don't feel like you're being punished. You know, don't feel like, you know, oh, I got to pay all this debt off. I really just want to do this, this, and this. Don't feel like you're being punished. Just know that um, you're being freed. You know, look at it as you're freeing yourself from the bondages of debt. You're freeing yourself because we that's what financial freedom is all about is you're giving yourself options. Wouldn't it be cool to not be bound to a job because you're drowning in debt? What if you're debt free? Now all sorts of doors are open for you. And the cool part of paying down your debt that you know is a result of it is your credit is automatically gonna increase. So if you have a plan where you're paying your debt down, by default, your credit is gonna start getting better anyways because your debt to income ratio is going to get lower. So it's so many benefits of doing this and it's just really about how you think in your mind and have to change your mindset. Know that this is temporary. This has an end date. <laughs> you know, this isn't like, this is the way it is going to be for my rest of my life. If you lay out a plan, you have a goal in mind, you have an end date in mind as well. And that's why I say we have some software that you can actually load that calculates all your debt and shows you exactly when your debt's going to be paid off and when you're going to be debt free. How cool is that to know I will be debt free by X date? 2023, 2021, 2020, whatever the case may be. It's very exciting to know that you're gonna be free from the bondages of debt within a certain period of time and you have a blueprint that shows you that. And then celebrate. When you do pay off these little debts, you pay that credit card off, go celebrate, you know. Go out, have a nice dinner, make a social media post, celebrate your success because it is definitely 
worthy of celebrating that you took the initiative to build a plan and execute that plan. Because again, remember, I talk about education, preparation, and action. Number one, you got to get educated. Learn that there is a system that you can use. Number two, you got to prepare yourself. And I'm going to talk about preparing yourself in the action step. And then number three, you got to go into action and implement the actual plan. Because a plan, a, a, a dream or goal without a plan is just nothing more than a dream. I kind of messed that up a little bit, <laughs> but you get what I'm saying. If you don't lay it out, map it out, and actually put it in place, then it's all it's going to be is just a dream. So those are some of the things that you can do in terms of um, changing your mindset about debt and putting yourself on the path to financial freedom. So um, I want to see if there are any questions. Doesn't look like there are any questions. So let's talk about the action step. What thing can you do right now? Like literally you could do it tonight, but certainly within the next few days. What, are, what is something that you can do to get yourself on a path to eliminating your debt? Well, the action step is number one, you've got to understand what is all your debt. I've talked to a lot of people and a lot of people don't truly know how much debt do you really have? Is it 50,000? Is it 100,000? Let's, let's get a picture of that. We've got to be able to paint that picture because you can't solve what you can't see. So the action step is to get all of the debt that you have. And that's, again, consumer debt, not your expenses. Your consumer debt. Get all of the debt that you have and lay that debt out. Lay it out from the smallest to the largest and total it up so you at least know what you are working with. And you can do that. You can handwrite it. You can do it in an Excel spreadsheet, whatever you need, but list out that debt. And again, if you want to use a tool that can help you with pretty much all of this, then, you know, I actually have a tool and several of the people that are on this call have a tool, a system that actually lays it out for you. And I'm going to talk more about that on day six. I'm bringing all of this together. How does all of these strategies come together in a, a actual roadmap? and a plan so that you are simultaneously working through all of these different areas through an actual laid out plan. And that's going to be on day six. So action step again, gather up all of your debt, list them out from the smallest to the, um, the smallest to the greatest. You want to basically prepare this. What is your debt? What are your balances on your debt? And how long is it going to take to pay off? What's your payoff date? Because then the next thing that you want to do is start to work these strategies and free up some cash to be able to see how you can get yourself out of debt quicker than just paying the minimum payment. The other thing that's going to be an important part of this debt elimination is creating a budget for yourself. Um, having a budget to, to control your spending and making sure you know where your money is going is very important because without a budget, you're kind of flying blind and it makes doing something like this very difficult because your money is not being controlled. And I love the term, and here's another term for you to consider, it's called zero-based budget. A zero-based budget is basically where every dollar that you bring in is allocated somewhere. That means that if I make a thousand dollars, Every month, every month, I know where my $1,000 is going. I've got my money allocated to the things I need. I've got part of that money allocated to my living expenses, part of that money allocated to my debt, part of that money allocated to investing, part of that money allocated to whatever else is going on, whether it's you know things that you need, some event that's coming up. But your money has a home. Every dollar has a home. And if you put yourself in that position to be able to allocate your money because free money disappears and it, it, it leaves. And have you ever been in a position you're like, man, okay, I don't know where this money went. And that's because you don't have a vision or a plan to allocate your money. So you should take that thousand dollars and allocate it all the way down to zero. Now that doesn't mean that something doesn't have to happen. It's just you're allocating for it. So if you know you need um, you know, you get your hair done every two weeks, allocate that money. And then by doing that, you may see, man, this, I got more stuff than money, right? Or as, as, uh, one of my 
business partners, John says, I got more month than money, right? So I have a thousand dollars. And when I lay out everything, man, I'm coming up with a shortfall, which means that you have to do something different in terms of adjusting your expenses. So building a budget is an important part of it. Another key important part of it is creating an emergency fund, building up an emergency fund, because if you don't have any money set aside for an emergency, because it's not a matter of if it will happen or when it will happen. It's a matter of if or when I totally screwed that up. <laughs> it's a matter of when, not if the emergency is going to happen. So having some money set aside, and I would recommend at a bare, bare minimum, a thousand, ideally more like $3,000 set aside for emergencies because the last thing that you want to do something comes up your car breaks down the you know the furnace breaks down in the house and now you got to dip back into that credit card again and now you're paying interest on a balance that you have to carry over because you don't have the funds to pay for it outright so creating a budget and having an emergency fund will definitely enable you to work this plan uh this debt elimination plan and again i'm going to sum all of this up on uh, Saturday, day six, when I bring everything together to show you a roadmap on how you can apply all these strategies I'm covering over these days in a step-by-step -step program that can help you get yourself truly on the road to financial freedom. So are there any questions? I don't see any questions popping up. All right, guys, so stay tuned for um, tomorrow series on investing, talk about how to make your money grow, because if you want financial freedom, that residual income that I talked about, super important, making your money grow when you're not working. So that will be tomorrow's topic. Please share this information with others, tag them in the post. If you feel that they can get some benefit of it, uh, from it, but it's really important to understand these strategies and it's not as difficult as you may, as you may think in terms of debt elimination. Oh, and I'm sorry, if you wanted some, the software, if you're interested in the software that kind of lays this all out, you can definitely follow up with me. Uh, we have an inexpensive software. I actually use it and I model it. As things change, you can go in and update it based on your situation. Um, you know, maybe something happened where you had to pivot for a little bit. That happened with me last year. Um, when I, you know, was dealing with my uh, breast cancer challenge, I had to pivot a little bit because I had to divert some of my expenses to healing. And so I had to change up my plan, but the key is I had a plan and I was able to go back in and say, all right, I got to pivot a little bit. Now let's change this to see what it looks like. And now I'm back on that plan again. So, you know, life happens. The key is just making this a part of your lifestyle. If you truly have the desire to change the wheel, it can definitely happen and it's not as hard as you think. All right, guys, so take care. Have a good evening. Happy Thursday, and I will talk to you tomorrow.